Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. On this channel over the years, I've had a lot to say about being an unauthorized repair shop owner and what it's like to deal with authorized repair centers. When you deal with authorized repair centers, you're often dealing with people that are not actually allowed to do a lot of repairs. Because they're not allowed to do a lot of really basic repairs, they barely understand how the devices actually function or are put together, as you can tell from this phone call when somebody says that an iPhone 6 is a headphone jack hard soldered onto the motherboard and that replacing a defective headphone jack or charge port requires deleting all the customer data. There are many times on this channel where I've gone over what it is like to be an authorized service provider and how authorized service providers have metrics in place that are pretty much set up to screw the customer as well as the technician. And today what I'd like to do is just read you an email that I received from a gentleman that I've been going back and forth with for a while who works at a repair shop that is authorized by Samsung to do repairs in their devices. So you can just understand how disheartening it can be to be an authorized repair center. Because I think a lot of the new people coming to this channel wonder, why does Lewis fight for right to repair? Why doesn't he just get authorized so that he could work on this stuff? And the reality is that you don't really get access to anything, even if you're authorized. You can't get chips, schematics, lots of different parts, and you're forced to do things in a way that's so fundamentally customer and friendly. The second thing I wanted to point out is this video that I did 10 years ago, what it means to be of service, the people who don't get burned out as technicians. In this video, I'm going over what it means to be of service, the people who do not get burned out as technicians, the people that are going to not only continue to do great work, but have a feeling of fulfillment in their work, even if you're not making as much money as you would in another field, because you were of service to somebody and you helped them in a way that they would not have been helped by anybody else. That is an incredibly rewarding feeling. And the email that I received from this gentleman who works at a repair shop that is authorized by Samsung really demonstrates to me the joy that you can get out of this job, even if you're not making as much money as you could in another field, even when you have your hands tied behind your back, simply going the extra mile to ensure that somebody's day doesn't suck is a great way and advertise the benefits of working in this industry. And it's why I fight for this industry and I want to see repair remain something that is possible into the future. So with that being said, let me anonymize some of the details by editing them and read the email. I have quite the story about Samsung's terrible service and support. I work for a third-party repair shop and retailer that is a Samsung genuine service provider. We repair at my workplace a high volume of Samsung Galaxy devices. It's one of the chains, you break it, our idiots break it more kind of repair shops. Depending on which one you go to and who helps you, you could have an excellent, knowledgeable service or a god-awful experience. The joy of authorized repair. I have many complaints about the program, including the unavailability of parts, price of parts, lack of technical support for board level issues and software. I'm certain you're already aware of how much of a grift Samsung's genuine independent service programs are. I am. My specific grievance with Samsung today is related to a customer with an in-warranty hardware issue she had with her Samsung refurbished S21 she purchased from Samsung themselves. The issue she had was a failure in the magnetic sensor, the compass and location system located behind the octopanel grill on the display side of the metal frame. This failure is likely due to the display being improperly gold wire glass refurbished slash remanufactured by Samsung themselves, as this is a phone that she bought directly from Samsung. In the Samsung customer support go fuck yourself pipeline, their technicians instructed the customer to come to one of our repair shops for diagnostics and report to them results. I have this in writing. We have access to Fenrir, Samsung's post-repair quality control diagnostic tool, and this is a reasonable request in theory. The other chain repair shop, which is local to me, contacted me as a more senior technician to assist with troubleshooting the device as they couldn't get the diagnostic tool to work. Samsung's policy for SGP service providers is to run and pass Fenrir on every single Galaxy repair, along with the SVP part number and a unique QR code specific to that part in the ticket manager. The system marks their device, IMEI, and Samsung servers as a device which has been repaired without the warranty being voided. However, the first tech who contacted me did not know that Samsung's diagnostic tool is heart garbage and has never worked, not once. And not using the star pound zero star pound diagnostic tool in trying to use this bullshit proprietary software is a waste of time and energy. So much for providing support, huh? I did the diagnostics on board. The magnetic sensor failed every time. Since this is a hardware failure, they factory reset the device twice at this point, it's covered under Samsung's warranty. A simple SGP frame-in, new battery pre-installed, new buttons, vibration motor, front-facing camera, fingerprint sensor, screen repair would fix the issue. So I contacted Samsung. After about two hours on the line with their support, they could not authorize or have me simply invoice an in-warranty repair under the customer's ticket as a Samsung certified repair service provider. With Samsung's lockdown verification system, they can't provide that service in their policy. I had to tell this customer, A, I know exactly what the problem is and how to fix it. B, I am holding the exact OEM provided repair part in my hand. C, 
It's after hours. This repair would take me no more than 15 minutes. D. Samsung is responsible for the issue you're experiencing and is covered by their flimsy dental floss bullshit warranty. And finally, Samsung insists on wasting your time shipping your phone across the country with a two-week lead time just to replace the exact same part the exact same way I would right now. They could pay us the cost of the SGB part, 190 and I would happily fulfill the repair by their standard right here, right now, and it would cost them less money. But Samsung knows if you have to mail your one and only phone off to them for a week or two, you're more likely to buy a new phone. They also know that because you had such a dog shit experience with their refurbished devices that you are more likely to buy new into the future. Anyway, why the fuck is Samsung sending people to me to do free labor? They request that our specific business to do a hardware diagnostic, but when there's a problem, we have to tell the customer to go fuck themselves on behalf of Samsung? What the hell, Samsung? They are literally trying to con the customer into paying $400 for an in-warranty issue or buy a new phone unnecessarily. And my place of work is the free diagnostic center that they use as they please without any compensation. I decided to say, fuck you, Samsung, fix the busted sensor with a soldering iron for free, check the issue was resolved, and sent the customer home happy. Of course I was tipped by the customer for the fix, and I didn't use a single inventory part. Ha. Best regards, and thank you sincerely for all that you do for Right to Repair. And this is a story that anybody who's worked at a center that either is authorized or is a third party independent, some sort of author, third party authorized way is used to hearing. You're used to having to deal with these circumstances where the way that you deal with the customer in the authorized way, you're essentially forced to give them a crappier experience than you would. Let's just assume that they were not going to allow this gentleman to use a soldering iron. You are not allowed to do actual repairs there. They are providing the parts to the service center. The service center has the same OEM part that Samsung would have used themselves. Why not have the place that is a part of that program replace the part that is a part of Samsung's program within that program so that that customer could leave and have a working device? And it's one of those things where people will say that this Lewis is conspiratorial in his thinking. He just thinks every company wants to make more money. Here's the way I see it. Let's say the system is set up in a very incompetent way. This has been my argument for a very long time. Let's say it's set up in an incompetent way that just so happens to make the company more money and screw the customer. It's one thing when it is incompetence. It's another when that incompetence exists for a year or three years or six years or eight years and gets the attention of national news and gets the attention of a YouTube channel with over a million subscribers and gets the attention of the general public and management still refuses to do anything about it. Again, we are all going to make mistakes in business. God knows I've made mistakes in mine, and I would not want to be crucified for making a mistake. Where I see the problem is when the manufacturer doesn't want to correct the mistake. I've had problems before. I had an issue with my system five years ago where every now and then it was double billing people. And here's the thing that I noticed when it was finally brought to my attention. Not every single person that was being double billed would actually contact me about it. So it's one of these things where I could just kind of let it go along and notice I could just have the receptionist just refund 100% of the people that email in to complain about this and I just so happen to keep the money that comes in from the people that don't or I could not pretend that I didn't notice and actually do something about it. Fix the problem. Sometimes problems occur because of incompetence or something broken in the system along the way. Mistakes happen. It's when a mistake just so happens to benefit you and you pretend that you don't notice it when it's been brought to your attention year after year after year that I no longer care if what's occurring is because of incompetence and not malice. It becomes malice to not fix incompetence. And I think that that is something that really needs to be brought to light here. Yes, not everything is a conspiracy. But once you notice it, once you notice just how bad the system is and you can see it and it's right in front of your face and that system being really, really bad just so happens to benefit the people that are choosing to not pay attention to it, that kind of sucks. This gentleman whose email I read here wishes to remain anonymous, both the name of his shop and him himself, and I completely respect that. But if he's watching this video, I want him to understand that you are one of the people who are of service. You are one of the people that I hope does not get burned out in your job, because as much as it sucks to have to deal with these systems, as much as it probably sucks that you could get paid more doing something else, one of the things to understand is that that customer, if they had went anywhere else, would have had to wait a week or two without their stuff. They would have had to go to the store, transfer all their stuff over to another phone, deal with all this crap. And this is one of those things where I think it's really important to understand that you made that customer's day. You made their day better in a way that would have not been if they had went anywhere but to you. And that's something that you should be proud of. I remember that feeling. You know, I don't deal with customers in the front of the store the same way that I did even four years ago when I would sit at the front of my business and I had a lot of walk-in business. 
But for a good 10 years, even when I was 10 years into the company, I would still sit at the front of my store and every now and then deal with the customers that walked in in this manner. That's a very fulfilling feeling. And it's something that means a lot more than just the money. Knowing that you made somebody's day, knowing that somebody's day would have sucked, but it doesn't suck because you were there. People like you who put in the extra effort make the world a better place. And you are why I will continue to fight for unauthorized repair as long as I possibly can. Thank you for what you do. I'm hoping that the people who watch this kind of get the idea. I'm also hoping that they're open to reviewing some of these older videos that I do where I go over this many times on my channel. Why don't you just get authorized? Why don't you get authorized by the manufacturer? Lewis just doesn't want to pay for manufacturer authorization. Authorized repair shops can't do jack shit. It's really important to get that point across. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.